a great opportunity today to share um, our experience with uh, Archer and the grafting. We have uh, made a huge uh, advances in, in that field. It's now uh, for us routine to treat most uh, arch disease with uh, arch endografts. Uh, we've uh, actually now have developed a, a full percutaneous uh, approach uh, to uh, that uh, specific procedure. And I think what is very important is uh, what's next. And what's next is uh, to be able uh, to have no uh, anatomical limit and we need to work uh, with our cardiology and CT surgeon uh, colleagues uh, to find a way to get a seal at the uh, root uh, of the aorta. So uh, what's next is actually the endobental procedure. So we need to have an endograft now that will include a, a taver, who would include uh, branches uh, to the coronary arteries and once this will be um, fully evaluated, I think we will have the, the ultimate uh, endovascular repair that will include the root, include the supraortic uh, branches, and so we will have no anatomical uh, restriction to perform those procedures. Now I can continue on and uh, tell you about the, the results about uh, uh, arch endografting. Uh, we've specifically evaluated uh, arch endograft in patients that had undergone uh, previous open repair of an acute type A dissection. And looking at 70 patients, we've had an unmatched uh, morbidity and mortality of 4%, uh, which is, I think, uh, something to consider uh, when you compare it to open surgery that requires a, a redo. Uh, stenotomy, deep hypothermia, uh, and uh, in those specific patients, I think that arch endografting is something very interesting. Having said that, we would never uh, perform an arch endografting in a connective tissue uh, disorder uh, patient. I think uh, our first strategy would be open surgery and then relining with a branch or a fenestrated endograft in the future if required. And if you want to know more, come to PVI.